Another week, another argument in the Dead by Daylight community. Now, this one is centered around the question on whether or not DC penalties should be removed from the game. And this argument got so big that there was even a news article written about it. Right here, from PC Games, Dead by Daylight Killers divided as behavior cuts horror game DC penalty. Dead by Daylight Killers and Survivors expressed conflicting views on DBD Reddit as horror game maker behavior removes the penalty from disconnecting from the multiplayer. But I thought this was a really interesting topic and I actually wanted to look into it more. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. I hope you guys enjoy this. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you do. But without much further ado, let's get into it. So a little bit of background before we get started on why the DC penalties were initially removed, because I think some people were confused. It wasn't really spoken about widely, but basically when the Halloween event came out haunted by daylight, as happens with any new update with behavior, seems to be a common theme. The player base experienced a lot of crashes and, you know, like server disconnects and all that kind of stuff. So to try and ensure that people weren't being punished for this when it wasn't their fault that they were disconnecting from games, behavior removed the DC penalty. And it is back on now, just in case anybody was was confused i'm sure people have very quickly figured this out when they tried to dc against a nurse and found themselves slapped with a five minute timer now whilst the dc penalty was off people took to reddit to youtube to twitter everywhere basically to express their opinions on whether or not it was a good thing for the game including me by the way i want to make this very clear at the start that i actually have an an opinion on whether or not this is a good thing and i want to present it to you so you know where i stand on the issue i'm trying not to come into this with too much bias i just want to give you the full overview but my standpoint is that it is not a good thing to remove the DC penalty. Basically, what this promotes is survivors can say, if you are not playing a killer that I want you to play, or if you're playing a killer that I don't want to go up against, I'm not going to play with you. And on the flip side of it, if a killer sees that, you know, survivors bring in certain items, let's say four medkits, four gen repair toolboxes, then they can DC as well because that's not going to be easy for them. You know, it's not going to be a, a fun time for them. And that's where the entitlement comes in for me. Another way of explaining the entitlement with another example is like, imagine you're back in school and you're on the playground and you know you're playing tag and you're chasing somebody because you're it and you go to tag them and suddenly they stop and they go, oh, no, 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 I, I, time out, time out. I need to go and get some water or I need to go to the toilet. I'm not playing anymore. And then they come back a bit later on and they get right back involved with the game and then somebody else is about to tag them and they do the exact same thing. That's what I mean. That's that's the same energy as DCing from a game because you don't like the killer or you don't like what the survivors bring in. I did go on to say as well, maybe it's good for people who constantly get into hack games. In brackets, I don't agree. It is personally, but that's a separate note. I will expand on that in a little bit. But that's not what the majority of the player base will be using it for, if we're being honest. And to be honest... Based on what I saw from Twitter and everybody who was talking about it, I think I was right in saying that's not what the majority of the player base was using it, using it for. It seems that the majority of the player base was using it uh, to not play against nurses, to not play against legions, uh, to not play against twins, and all of those kind of killers. Now, in interest of presenting the full picture and, you know, giving both sides of the argument as unbiased as possible, I want to look, at, first of all, at why people think it's good for the DC penalty to be removed. Some of the most common arguments that I found whilst I was looking through these debates. Now, the first one, it kind of flies directly in the face of what I tweeted personally, which is, it's your experience, it's your game, you should be able to play how you want. So if you don't want to play against a certain killer, you shouldn't have to. And to an extent, I do agree with that. You, pay, you paid for the game, unless you got it for free. But you made the choice to download the game. It is your time, your experience. With that time, you should be able to, to do what you want. The second point that people were making was that this is good for people who get into hacked games, right? You know, if they, uh, if they get into a game with a hacker or a cheater, it negates the possibility of them being held hostage. And it also means that they just don't have to be a part of that experience if they don't want to. If you are like just a casual player and you get into a hacked game, then fair enough, it might be good for you in that instance because it's very unlikely that the hacked game was for you, if that makes sense. Basically, what I'm saying there is a lot of the bigger streamers, a lot of the bigger content creators find themselves being targeted by these hackers and by these cheaters. If you are in that position, as in if you are a big content creator, removing the DC penalty doesn't actually serve you any benefit, in my opinion, because let's say you DC, yeah, you don't get the penalty, but these hackers have the ability to just literally put themselves straight back into your lobby. So you're not going to get away from the problem and you're kind of just giving them what they want. They want you to be annoyed to the point where you stop playing the game. So there isn't actually a benefit there in my opinion for like the, the bigger content creators, but for the casual player, 
I can kind of see how that would be a good thing. The third point of it being good was around the fact that if it's an accidental DC, you don't face any punishment for it. Which, to be fair, is one of the few I actually agree with. And it was the whole point of the DC penalty being removed. You know, it was so that people didn't have to suffer if the game just crashed on them. And it, and it had nothing to do with them or what they did. And the fourth point, which I think is something people brought up specifically in reply to my tweet, was that Legion sucks and Mending Simulator sucks. And to be fair, I kind of have to agree with that as well. Now, on the flip side of it, on the other side of the debate, there were a lot of people who were saying that this was a bad thing for the game. Now, the first point was that it promotes entitlement, which was the whole point of my tweet. And a lot of people seem to agree with me. And I saw it in a lot of other people's statements as well. And I think it was for the reasons that I mentioned. It's not really fair for somebody to have to go into a game and know that people are going to DC just because of the things that you're bringing in, the gameplay mechanics that you're using, and pretty much nothing else. The second point that people were making was that not having the DC penalty and allowing people to leave games against certain killers just promotes a certain roster of killers. You know, so if people DC against, let's say, Legion or Nurse, then the killer who is playing that will then kind of default to a more acceptable killer. And then we don't get any variety. And the final point that people were making is that there is no longer a punishment for people who rage quit. I saw so many clips and videos of people who would beat somebody on a loop, beat somebody in a chase, and their opponent, instead of, you know, just accepting that defeat, would just DC and leave the game. It's kind of funny to begin with, but then you're like, oh, okay, now I've got to go through the whole process of, of readying up again. And if that's happening game after game after game, and, you know, you've gone 10 games and you haven't actually completed the trial because people just keep DCing at the drop of a hat, that could probably get really, really annoying. So those are the main arguments from both sides of the debate. And I'm not making this video to definitively say that one side is more correct than the other. And I'm not making this video to definitively say that the DC penalty should or should not exist. What I'm trying to do is one, provide just an overview of everything that happened because this was the topic of conversation over the past few days. So it's interesting to, now that the dust has settled, to kind of look back over it and uh, and see what people were saying. And I'm also very interested on hearing your guys' thoughts in the comments. Obviously, keep the conversation respectful. I think this is a really interesting topic, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. I would love to hear your points. But that would about do it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you did to help me hit my target of 25k by the end of the year. I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. Thank you so much for watching this video, and bye for now. So let me break, break, break it on.